Well, welcome to our first session of the uh, the Tech Talks with Solomon and Bruce, Patrick, and I. I'm set up in uh, Warren. This is our first try at this. Hopefully, you guys can see us. Patrick, Bruce, you hear me okay? Yep. Right. Sound good. Loud and clear. But uh, as I mentioned, I'm in Warren. Uh, Bruce is in Jackson, New Hampshire, and Patrick's in Bow, New Hampshire. We're going to, this is our first effort at this. We're going to do a quick hit on a few key new products and then open the room to question and answers. Uh, but I'm Mike. If there's anybody who I haven't met, I'm Mike Aker. I'm going to share my screen so we can go through a couple of, uh, of helpful slides. It'll probably go about 15 minutes on product and then we'll open to questions and answers. This is the last day prior to Sugarbush closing last spring in March. And uh, I'm looking forward to that next day on snow, which is only about a month away now. Uh, all the resorts are talking about how they're going to open. So we're super psyched. And I think if you guys have seen the kind of traffic we're hearing about, the enthusiasm level is super high for customers already. We're going to be doing digital asset uh, spreading through Instagram and Facebook of our own through our Tyrell Sports Group Instagram page and our Tyrell Sports Group Facebook pages. But in addition to that, Solomon has an Instagram um, account that they are regularly feeding info. And if you guys haven't signed up for that yet, sign up on your Instagram. It's Alpine Insider Solomon, and that'll get you guys connected. So you're regularly getting some bite-sized snippets from the product managers and from Solomon Sports Marketing, just some really good key product guide and tech info that'll help out. So that's the Instagram site on the Solomon side, just Alpine Insider Solomon. And it's a closed site, so you'll basically apply, they'll approve you, and uh, you'll start getting that information, everything from product videos to product testimonials to tech info and all that. With that, we're going to go through three key products today. This is a category that has been extremely popular uh, this, this summer and into the fall, obviously. Some people are calling it the insurance category. Uh, anyone who doesn't own gear that is capable of going uphill is considering it this season. And as you guys know, QST skis, Shift MNC bindings, and the new Shift Pro boot are super complimentary gear. So Patrick's going to spend a few minutes on QST. Bruce is going to cover the bindings, and I'll cover boots, and then we'll open up to questions. Thanks, Mike. Patrick here, coming from Tyrol Sports Group's Bow Headquarters slash Service Center slash Warehouse talk about the QST skis. Uh, it's a little bit of a review for probably for a lot of you folks, but uh, it's important. And this slide is, is pretty neat because it kind of shows Solomon's approach to the free ride category where other brands don't take the same approach. And they, they look at it from a material standpoint and the QST skis show that, uh, that different approach by using CFX, uh, corked amplifier, and a construction that basically keeps it lightweight so it works really well for the uphill capabilities if you want to put a, a shift binding that's on the uh, on the ski or use it for skiing on groomers and have that power and control for hard snow conditions like we have here in new england so you can kind of see here on the little demo tool here from on the on the small screen you can see that cork amplifier encased in an abs frame that's in the in the front so the cork amplifier is uh, basically sort of a hybrid of a sil silicone elastomer and also cork to keep to control that vibration on that rocker tip and then the cfx runs down a channel that's embedded into the core of the v uh the v poplar core that gives it the the stability and the uh, of metal but without the extended weight and also gives it pop and spring for those free rides so really the qst category whether you're looking at the double rocket versions in the the 118 and the 106 you know for the slarving and slarping your turns in soft and wet snow um, or the more versatile 99 and 92s, they all share this construction. And really everything from groomers to skiing sloppy bumps to thrashing around in the woods and a nice lightweight uphill capability, QST is your answer for that. Women's skis use the exact same construction as the men. There's no difference, not even in mounting points. Uh, to give you know, the ladies that are just as hard chargers and just as ripper, much rippers as men, the same sort of uh, power and control. And that's it from the warehouse. Cool. So Bruce is going to take you through shift bindings. And uh, he is set up in his workshop over in Jackson, New Hampshire. We'll let Bruce take you through the workshop. Hey, everyone. So just a, uh, a bit of a, of a review on the shift binding. Um, this is obviously it's not a, uh, a new model, but there are two new versions of the shift this year. 
Um, one is the shift 10. So now you're not just locked in for the six to 13 uh, range. Now you've got a four to 10 range with the shift 10 as well, which is obviously better for your lighter weight skiers. Um, and for some of your uh, teenager or young kids that are gonna fit better into that weight range. So as you see the shift finding here, one of the things that I like to talk about always is from a skiing perspective, you know, this is a 5355 boot that I'm stepping into the binding here right now. I can ski in any type of boot that I want. The shift is an MNC binding, meaning multiple norm certified. So therefore, if it's a 5355 boot like this or a 9523 boot like this one, okay, both work perfectly fine in the binding for skiing downhill. When I want to go uphill, I'm going to need a 9523 or a grip or a grip walk boot, which is also 9523 now with tech inserts in it. So as you're showing the binding to a consumer, you want to be able to go through all of the features and how to operate the binding as you're talking to them about how to use it. Because, you know, as we've seen, um, as this binding has grown an incredible popularity, um, there still is some confusion on how to operate this thing. And I think the more often that a consumer can hear someone who knows what they're doing with it, explain it to them, um, it will be a better experience for everybody in the end. So I'm just going to run you through it one time uh, quickly. I get to the top of my, um, or I'm getting ready to go skin uphill. Okay, the first thing that I want to do is pull this lever back that's in between the toe wings here. And the best way to do it if you're showing it to someone in your store is to just use your thumb, pull it back this way, and you're going to open up these toe wings. And then this lever now controls uh, pretty much everything that's going on with the binding as I'm going to be ascending with it. Connect into the boot uh, this way with the uh, pins on the toe. And then to lock up the brake, this is important. And I, I really think that this is something that you should be explaining to people every single time you're showing this binding. My recommendation for this is to do this with your hands. This is set up so if I throw this first of two levers here up into this position here, the best thing that you can do, and this is easy when you're, when you're out skiing because you're going to have gloves on, is to just grab the arm of the brake here and pull it up and make sure that this piece is locked down. It's set up so I could, yeah, I could flip it up that way and I could jam down on it with my boot to lock it up. Um, but these are really lightweight composite materials and this is a $600 binding. I really like to stress to people, hey, you know what? The more gentle you are with the binding, the longer it's gonna last. Um, so in this position here, I get about four degrees of lift in the heel. So it's really great for your approaches and your, and your lower angle um, grades. And then you've got this bail that you can flip up with your, uh, with your ski pole, using the grip is the best way. And that'll get you onto your, up to the point where the pitch is steep enough that the skins won't grip anymore, okay? On the toe piece here, you've got three positions of adjustment, okay? So you have, when you first step into it, it's actually fairly loose. And if somebody is gonna be on this thing, you can twist right out of it very easy, like I just did right there, okay? And then in the middle position, um, gives you a little bit more force, and then you can put it all the way up into the, the uh, what we would consider a locked position, it's about a den of 12, um, and that will get you a very, very secure position where you're not gonna twist out of that binding while going uphill. Okay, so I go up, I've done my scan, I'm getting ready to go ski, I'm gonna put the lever all the way down, I'm gonna push it down, step back out of the, of the binding this way, I'll pull this lever back up, which will lock the toe wings in place. This is very important now that I have this lever locked down and connected this way, okay? You cannot ski in this binding unless that, that lever, well, actually, let me rephrase that. You cannot ski safely in this binding without this lever locked all the way down, okay? Then I'm gonna flip my bail back down. And here again, with this, uh, with this piece for uh, locking your brake up, again, I'll just use my finger and flip that down this way. Then I can step into the binding and go skiing and you're all set. So that's the, uh, that's the demonstration, pretty slick setup. Um, this screen just shows you some of the highlights of the binding. For those of you guys that have been working with it for a couple of years, you're probably super familiar with all the features and how to cycle and function the shift binding. Uh, but a couple of things of note is it does have the level of elastic travel or shock absorption of a true Alpine performance binding. So really good Alpine shock absorption higher in elastic travel even than a lot of alpine bindings um, with that uphill touring function. And it's an 865 gram binding thanks to the carbon injected construction MNC. Bruce said a couple of different models in uh, 10 din and a 13 din. And we even have some color options this year.
So that's a snapshot of the entire range of backcountry capable bindings, S Lab Shift 13 and 10. And also we do have the tech binding, the Mountain Pure, which is a minimalist pure tech uphill binding. Um, and the Guardian MNC is still in the line as well. So moving on to the newest product for tonight, which is the Shift Pro Boot. Um, I wanted to just give you guys a couple of the key points and rundown. So the Shift Pro Boot is all new for this season and it takes a lot for a product to share the name of the most revolutionary binding that we've introduced. So the Shift Pro Boot takes the Pro Last, any boot from Solomon that you're familiar with, with the name Pro, you know is a 100 millimeter four foot last. And through the use of custom shell, it can be expanded from 100 to 106. And it's executed on a four buckle overlap construction with a super low foot position. So you get great snow feel on a boot that's designed to free ski. And it also keeps the foot in a nice low position when you're in that binding for the uphill mode in the pins. So it has the lowest foot position of any boot in this category from a performance perspective. Uh, traditional four buckle appearance, but one of the unique things on the Ship Pro is the hiking mechanism that's called Sherlock. So on the back of the boot, there's a horizontally oriented lever that will lock or unlike the upper cuff from the lower shell. And it allows the boot to really easily hinge fore and aft for the walking, uh, for the hiking movement. Uh, one other thing about that Sherlock mechanism, or if you can see inside the boot here, but if you get one off the shelf in the store, when you put it into walk mode, you'll see a black spoiler that when the boot is in the walk mode, you can feel it hinge fore and aft. When the boot's locked in the ski position, that spoiler nests on the lower shell of the boot and it reinforces the lateral rig rigidity of the back of the cuff of the boot. So it makes the boot ski as well downhill as is possible without being a full rigid cuffed four buckle lower shell. So that's the, the hike and ride mechanism and the custom shell HD. We also use the core frame, that insert of carbon fiber, uh, carbon infused material composite that wraps the cockpit of the boot to really give the boot great lateral performance while minimizing the weight. And then you're probably familiar with the all seamless liners that we've introduced. We introduced originally in the S Max boots, brought them into S Pro, and now they're in the Shift Pro, adapted with a hinge mechanism built into the fabric on the back. So when the boot is in its walking position or its hiking position, the boot just has a super free, very relaxed rearward flexing motion. It's extremely comfortable when you're in the skin track. So that is the, uh, the Shift Pro from a product key point perspective. So and that's I'm just Pro. going to share this back the and show you a couple is available of more slides in a of imagery, a 120 and, and a 100. We'll open up to the, the Shift questions Pro and women's is available in a 110 and a 90. Uh, the reason we wanted to cover these boots now in our earliest tech update is by the time we get to December, they're probably going to be gone. We're seeing a ton of interest and uh, we wanted to make sure that you guys know uh, there's going to be people coming in looking for that category and specifically with the Solomon Pro Last and the fit and reputation we have, uh, we don't think they're going to be long for this world. So that's the Shift Pro family. One other thing to note is now that we have these complementary products with the QST skis, the Shift Binding, and the Shift Pro Boot, we also have a full junior, it's really a teenage, a crossover age product range with the QST Ripper, which comes all the way down to a 134. The Shift Pro 80 Team, which is a a reasonably priced boot with tech inserts and the full Sherlock mechanism. It doesn't have the carbon fiber in the core frame, but it's a fully functioning tech insert capable boot that combined with the S lab shift MNC 10 and that QST ripper is a great teenager um, setup for resort and backcountry for people who are into free skiing. So that's the quick hits on the new product that we wanted to cover today as a first Go around, I'm gonna take the screen off share. And if people wanna ask some questions, great. If they wanna ask what kind of flavor beer Bruce is drinking, we can do that too. What do you got there, Bruce? Miller Light. I am gonna unmute everybody. And if anyone prefers to send in a chat for a question or if uh, everything's fairly straightforward, we wanna use this format weekly. We'll cover different topics each week. We'll take uh, inbound feedback. If you guys have things you'd like to have us covered, you've got questions about we welcome those as well but uh 
in this new world order. We figured this would be a really good way just to kind of open an, a big Zoom meeting room and see who might want to show up and talk here for a bit. Hey, Mike. Dave Ryan with Mountainside. Thank you so much for hosting this. This is, has been great. Uh, nice to see people out there and get excited about the upcoming season. A uh, question I had was, obviously, in this category, um, you guys have pretty much been out there on your own, and there hasn't been a lot of competition. So to a certain extent, it's been a fairly easy sell for somebody that's looking to get in this side of the sport. Now there's some new ones coming out, and just curious as to what your thoughts are around some of the competition, in particular Mark's new binding. Um, I, I'm a you know, fan of this. I have one uh, right now. I'm about to put it on another ski. Um, uh, pretty soon here. Um, just, you know, what's your thoughts in comparison to the, the marker option? Thanks, Dave, for that question. I'll, I can take this one and then we can rotate the Bruce or Patrick or whatever. Um, as a general rule, um, it's always good to see competition in the market. It's nice to see other brands bringing stuff to market that are going to address the customer that, that we've really, I think we've targeted quite well with the shift. Uh, time will tell what the consumer demand and the success is of competitive products, but uh, I think, you know, I, I'd implore you to sit down with your marker rep and have him take you through the product. Um, so I can see him making an effort. We don't think a lot about the competition at this point right now because shift binding is kind of like you said, it's the, uh, it's the unicorn and it's been in the market for two years. So the track record that we've had from proven reliability and performance really sets it in a place in the market that even though there's some other product available or this might be the first year for some new product, um, I don't think we're really going to see, um, there will be enthusiasm for all the products out there, but I think, uh, I think we're in a position to maintain a pretty solid number one spot. Uh, Solomon as a brand commands 45% market share of the backcountry market right now, which that's all 550 to $600 shift bindings and a handful of guardians. So appreciate that. Uh, uh, Dave, that brings, most, up, uh, that brings up a question that I would have is the, you know, I'm anticipating a lot of people coming in the shop this year that are going to be those 80-20 skiers. Um, they don't want to get cut off guard next year. Going uphill has actually becoming in popularity the past couple of years. So how's the durability for somebody who's going to do 80% chairlift riding and maybe that 20%, you know, skinning up or hiking up? Um, that's a that's a uh, that's a really good question, Kevin. Um, and the uh, we did some early testing. And I did some uh, personal testing with a, uh, a close friend of mine who has a uh, very, very strong reputation for destroying equipment in a short period of time. I had her on a pair and, you know, just said like, Skeetis has your every, everyday binding. Um, and the durability on it, on it was really, really impressive. Um, as far as skiing it inbounds on bump runs and all of the things that, uh, that she was accustomed to doing and very, very, like I said, very abusive to products. I could show you some of her skis um, that I think are still laying around here that you'd be, um, it's horrifying to look at them. But, um, but uh, yeah, the, the durability so far has been really, really good um, with this binding and as good as any uh, Alpine binding really that I've seen in, in my years. Well, and to, to, add, to add to Bruce's point on that, um, when we first got shift bindings, we knew that strong skiing consumers were going to want to try the binding because you can tell them all day long that it skis as well as an alpine binding but they're not going to believe you unless they get to ski on it on hard snow so we mounted a bunch of shift bindings on our demo skis in our fleet for on snow demos and it's not technically designed to be a demo binding it's a retail binding it doesn't have a long track for demo but we would stagger our mounts so we'd have 10 or 12 pairs of skis with shift bindings on it for people to try and those skis got a ton of usage, a lot of adjustment, a lot of changing of boot soles, a lot of height adjustment. Um, and even with all that change for setup for demo purposes, um, I haven't seen any breakage. I've, I've stripped a couple of screw heads because I was, you know, pilot error with the screw shooter when adjusting the binding. Um, but the question is a really valid one. And one thing that it leads to this is seven years of R&D went into the shift binding. So there were prototypes being skied on by Solomon athletes and our sister brand athletes for that matter for several years prior to the binding coming to market. So by the time we hit market, they already had several years of long-term durability testing. And you know anything can happen. And you guys know in the cold environment of skiing, anything will. If you have an issue where a customer has a warranty problem, let us know and we'll probably take care of it just like we do any other warranty issue. But 
the incidence rate is extremely low. It's right in what would be expected for any ski boot or binding from a warranty perspective. Does that answer your question okay? No, that, that's perfect. It gives me definitely something to, you know, talk about uh, with the people and myself. I'm looking to probably get a shift this year. Right well, when you said the 80-20 skier, I was laughing because that's, that's me. I mean, I'm skiing with a shift binding on a QST 99 every day. And I think I skinned four times last winter. So might just add on to your dur durability um, um, from a, a personal perspective. As I mentioned, I love the binding. I've got multiple skis, but I um, on the weekends, besides working for Mike in the shop, I actually teach adaptive lessons Saturday, Sunday, and Special Olympics on Thursday evenings. Um, it's my go-to ski. It's on my go-to ski. Um, and myself, I'm not an easy skier by any means. I'm pretty hard, uh, uh, similar to to Bruce's friend out there, I'm pretty hard on my equipment. So not only am I hard on my equipment, and it really is my go-to ski and binding. Um, I, I'm out with with uh, you know adaptive students, and they have a tendency to be you know kind of a little rough on your your equipment as you're out there working with them. And I have had no issues with with it whatsoever. It's performed flawlessly both you know downhill and when I do go backcountry with it. Just overall, really pleased with with the design and then the durability from my experience. And this will be year three on it. Um, has just been outstanding. Yeah, um, go ahead. This is Joe. Um, I just thought I, you guys, I'm Joe. I work for Solomon on the marketing side, but I just thought I would weigh in on that question really quick from a different angle. We've basically outfitted every ski that we have for Powder Magazine ski test the past two years with shift bindings. So instead of using a traditional demo binding for one of the most important ski tests in the industry, we've been putting our shift binding on it you know, obviously mounting to make sure that we're accompanying as many boot soles as possible, but um, whether it's the QST 118, 106, 99, um, same on the women's side. Uh, the last two years, we've had shift bindings on everything for those tests, and I think the results speak for themselves when you look at how well the QST has done in that test, and it also allows versatility. You know, we're, we're able to ski the same ski inbounds, and then the test has been at Red Mountain Resort in BC, and we've been able to tour off the top and go out of bounds and, and allow them to get some fresh turns or, or test the touring function as well. So just from a different angle as far as durability goes um, and kind of confidence and performance. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate that. I, I was going to make one other point because, you know, the Internet's a dangerous place and there's plenty of people out there that don't have a face and they can speak whatever mind they want. There's always going to be haters and there's going to be people that have an opinion whether they don't like Solomon as a brand or whether they want to naysay shift or whatever the case may be. Um, and those people are out there, but the most important things to remember as a shop technician is if the binding is set up properly, the boot that's being used in the binding complies with an ISO norm and it's clean, then the forward pressure is properly set. The binders are going to function great. If someone's used to burying their forward pressure, cause that's what they've always done as a performance gear, or they play with different boots and they're switching boots in the binding without appropriately adjusting the toe height and managing that forward pressure, they may have issues just like any other performance binding. But um, just be aware that it's really important that a binding this technical be set properly by someone in a Solomon authorized shop that really knows what they're doing. Um, and if someone comes in expressing that they've had a problem or they sound like they have a negative opinion of the product, ask them some questions to find out where they had them adjusted. Where did they purchase their gear? Is there some way that to help them out? Um, Cause obviously we want to convert anyone that had a bad experience, but at the same time, there are some people that will just amplify negative things they heard if they're interested in undermining something that's out there. So um, we appreciate your guys' feedback. If you hear stuff like that, if you do have legitimate issues or questions or things you've never seen before, let us know. Um, Solomon has been a brand that for years has stood behind its product and will always take care of its consumer. That being said, um, if you do have a shop that has seen traffic in these categories, that's great. If you haven't yet seen the sell through, it's coming. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you don't have um, Shift Pro boots or you think you're going to need more, you probably want to plan that within the next couple of days. We're already seeing holes in our reorder stock for any boot that has tech inserts and we're seeing reorder depleting on shift bindings as well. So just so you guys are aware, um, once it's gone, it's gone. It might be like the bicycle trend from this past summer, but I think um, the enthusiasm for the season obviously is super high. We're gonna see a great season this year. We had snow on the ground here in Warren, so we're looking forward to it. 
Any other questions or thoughts? Bruce or Patrick, you have anything to wrap up? What kind of beer is that that you're drinking, Mikey? This is uh, Upper Pass Brewing Company's uh, Cloud Drop <laughs> IPA. And what's the percentage of alcohol in that, Mike? It's not small. I think this is uh, eight, <laughs> eight point zero actually. Um, wow. But they uh, they were actually founded at the base of Magic Mountain at the um, the Upper Pass Tavern. We stayed there for the Stratton Trade Show a couple of years ago. So, anyways, thank you guys all for your time. We really appreciate some feedback. If you uh, if you have a chance to either just re reply to the email that we sent um, for the invite for the meeting, if you guys came to the meeting and uh, keep an eye out, we'll be doing this next week with a different topic. And if you have any ideas or thoughts, let us know. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thanks, Mike. guys. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Care, guys. Excellent.